as Paul said, I'll be talking about what the, uh, the, the relationship is between data virtualization and business intelligence agility. Uh, meaning, uh, if we deploy data virtualization in a data warehouse environment, uh, it can make these environments a little bit more agile or flexible. Uh, what most organizations do is something like this. An architecture consisting of a whole chain of databases. Uh, and uh, these databases are connected with ETL scripts and replication scripts and we copy and we copy and we copy. The world of BI is changing and the question we have to ask ourselves does, do all those forms of BI really fit with that classic architecture? And, and well, the more you think about it, the answer is probably, well, maybe not. So maybe we do have to change. We're taking more and more time you know, to build systems, to build new reports. 30% uh, you know, of them indicated that they needed at least three months or more. So the question is, what can data virtualization do? Can it really make it more uh, agile, more flexible? Uh, uh, with data virtualization, what we're doing is we're decoupling all the reports, all the uh, analytical applications. We're decoupling them yeah, from the storage structures. Uh, I would say there are sort of three sort of dominant characteristics of this uh, this sort of architecture. One is decoupling, which I already mentioned. Uh, decoupling means that I'm hiding to the reports where the data is physically stored. But the good thing is, if I'm able to do that, if I'm able to sort of redirect the query yeah, from its own database, its personal data store to a data warehouse, what that means is that I can just throw away that personal data store. Uh, I don't need it anymore. And if I don't have that database, of course, it also means I can get rid of all the ETL stuff that I use every week or every day to fill yeah, that personal data store. Uh, the effect, of course, is that you're simplifying your storage structure, and a more simpler storage structure means it's more agile, it's more flexible. Uh, well, if we bring in a data virtualization server in the middle, I can have that specification there just once, uh, and then I, I don't need them anymore in my business objects tools nor in my SaaS tools. All the tools will use that one specification. So if I change it, if I suddenly change the definition of northern region, I change it in one spot, that's it. And then it applies to all the tools yeah, that use that specification. Uh, when you ask for the data, then it's transformed, it's cleansed, it's integrated, uh, it's a whole on-demand concept. Which, of course, works very well if users are asking for operational BI. Yeah, reports where they want to see yeah, the current state of the data. So there are a lot of the, the advantages coming from those characteristics. Uh, shared metadata specification, decoupling, and uh, fresh data. Data virtualization servers yeah, allow us to get to the Hadoop-based data, the NoSQL-based data, and, for example, the data that's still in your data warehouse, sort of bring that all together. And that makes it easier to sort of build reports that access both data sources. Yeah, with the virtual data models, what the only thing we have to do is design the data structures, uh, yeah, define the mappings, how do I get data from my data warehouse into those virtual data marts. In a way, the same things you have to do for a physical data mart, you also have to define the data structures, you have to define your ETL logic, but then the list continues. You already have the book on the right hand side, just wait two months and there's a, I'm not going to say better book, well maybe, uh, <laughs> no, 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 you shouldn't be saying that. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit more technical, this book, uh, uh, but you have to get that. That's a really good book on data virtualization, but maybe I'm a, I'm a little biased. Uh, oh, okay.